Please welcome Alex Singer and Andrew Rose with Voldex. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Singer, the founder and CEO of Voldex, and I'm joined here by my colleague Andrew. Hi there, I'm Andrew Rose, the Chief Product Officer at Voldex. We are so excited to present at the Roblox conference that brings together the most talented creators from around the world. Today we're going to talk about the differences between Roblox and mobile free-to-play. Between Andrew and I, we have nine years of experience making UGC games. I have eight and a half years of it, and Andrew has six months. Yeah, I really appreciate that, Alex. Thank you for calling that out. Uh, I may be a noob to the UGC space, but I bring the yin to your yang. Together, we have nine years of experience building non-UGC games. In this case, I have nine of it, and Alex has none. Thanks, Andrew. This blend of Roblox game experience and mobile game experience comes through in the Voldex team itself, where we're 50 people working on our own Roblox games. Our business model is that we acquire and grow Roblox experiences. When we acquire a game, we give the creators very substantial payouts that compensate them for what they've built and allow them to move on to their next big thing. To grow our games, we do so in three main ways. The first is that we give our games more energy than they've ever had, with a dedicated team of product managers, programmers, data analysts, marketing experts, and much more. These teams take the games to new heights. The second way we grow our games is by continuing to be a learning organization. So when we learn something on one game, we apply our learnings to our other games where it makes sense. That way, all of our games benefit from each other. The third way we grow our games is by using some Voldex technology, such as what we use for A-B testing, so we can measure the impact of our updates before we release them to all of our players. We've grown our, our games over 45% so far from when we've acquired them, and we've only owned them for a short amount of time, and we're just getting started. We own several top games on the platform, like Driving Empire, Zo Samurai, Dungeon Quest, and Base Battles. And when adding up all of our games, we're a top 10 creator on the platform by revenue. Today we're going to be covering two large topics. What's easier on Roblox compared to mobile, and what's different on Roblox compared to mobile. Andrew will start us off on what's easier on Roblox. I think we're having some technical difficulties with our images so far. You can see this one hasn't loaded, and unfortunately you can get to see all the amazing icons on the prior slides. Maybe those will resolve, hopefully over the next couple slides. But with respect to what's easier on Roblox, there are a number of areas we can cover. And again, I'm a UGC noob here, but it's been fascinating in the last six months to really see this and experience it. Today we're going to cover four areas. Acquisition, activation, speed, and finally player engagement. So let's get started. Oh, this is still working this way. Moment of truth. There ah, we go. We've got this working. Great. Look, user acquisition on Roblox is easier. There's a very high cost to scale on mobile. For every 100 installs on mobile, you're looking at having 75 paid installs supporting that. And each of those installs is costing about $2.20. So for a game like Driving Empire, which gets over 130,000 installs a day, here we are, you're looking at over $200,000 on user acquisition daily. Scaling on mobile requires a multi-million dollar marketing budget, whereas on Roblox, you receive a high volume of free organic traffic if your game has really strong KPIs, good retention, good engagement, good monetization. What it really does is allows you as creators to focus on making a good game versus balancing a cost of acquisition versus a lifetime value equation. And really what ultimately it does is it allows small creators a chance to succeed. Once you have all those players, on Roblox, getting to the fun is also much faster. So on mobile, you're often faced with a series of permissions, push notifications, app activity tracking, terms of service, privacy policy, all before you're engaged in doing anything. On mobile, you're often faced with having to authenticate the player using a third-party service like Facebook, Google, or Apple, or building your own homegrown service. Whereas on Roblox, all that is handled in advance. On mobile, you have to build the player identity from the start. You have to put them through a series of prompts and flows to do so. But again, 
on Roblox, all of that is handled for you. If you want to build a new identity, you can, but you don't have to. And finally, and really importantly, on mobile, if you want to access the social graph, you're having to connect to a third-party service like Facebook, or you're starting from zero and having players build their in-network uh, identity. Whereas again, on Roblox, as you all well know, your friends are there. You're already connected, and you're engaging together as a group. Ultimately, Roblox is really trying to build a platform that gets their friends and you together into games as fast as possible. Speaking of fast, I'll turn it over to Alex. In addition to activation and onboarding being seamless on Roblox, development is also extremely fast as it compares to mobile. Developing features is faster on Roblox. Releasing telemetry, which are events we add in our code to better understand what our players are doing, is faster on Roblox. Making new content is faster on Roblox. Releasing an update is instant on Roblox. Getting player feedback is faster on Roblox. Yes, there's a pattern here. Everything is faster on Roblox, and we love it that way. We talk in development timelines of days and not months like in the mobile games world. This is primarily due to platform features such as one-click instant publishing on Roblox versus mobile to publish an update to an app or game. It could take weeks just to get approvals, and the bureaucracy could really hinder the creativity. As we, begin, as we iterate, we begin to build these really engaged communities around our games. And one of the biggest privileges of having these engaged communities on our games is being able to co-develop our games with our players. We can include our games in the development process, get their feedback, and make our games as great as they could be. We're able to do this on Roblox for two main reasons. The first is that Roblox players are generally very passionate and willing to help. Even while they're not playing, they're thinking about our games, and they're present on Discord channels and more, giving us as creators so much feedback about our games that we can implement. The second reason is that the Roblox platform has tools like being able to easily create a development place and easily share that with our players to get their feedback early. So we can share our updates before they're ready to our most engaged players, get their feedback, and then implement it before we release the update to all of our users. We did exactly that on our game Driving Empire, where we wanted to improve the way cars drive. Driving Empire is a driving game. So when we change anything related to how cars feel to drive, we think that's very risky, and we want to make sure that it's the best release it could be. So we created the update, and instead of releasing it to everyone, we released it to our most engaged players and asked them for their feedback. And we got thousands of notes of feedback. We read everything, implemented what we could, and then asked our most engaged players to test again and again and again until it was ready, at which point we released the update to all of our players, and it was a very successful release. Now we're going to talk about what's different on Roblox. So what's different on Roblox? I'm sure many of you creators in the crowd can attest, but as you make updates and changes to your game, you learn. And over time, those learnings accrue and grow. Now, it's much the same at Voldex here, where across our portfolio of games, we make updates and we learn from those updates, and those learnings grow over time. Unfortunately, we only have, what, 26 minutes left together here, so we've had to make some hard choices. So we're gonna cover three main areas. Onboarding, social design, and then monetization design. Now, we here at Voldex try to A-B test everything. That means whenever we make a change or a feature update, a portion of our audience receives the change and a portion doesn't. We evaluate the metrics, we look at the player experience, we select the winner, and then roll it out to all players. So in the upcoming presentation, you're gonna see a number of data points, and those data points come from maybe tests that we've run. So get ready for a bunch of data. <laughs> ah, there we go. We needed a delay anyway. So you're going to hear this more than once, but uh, retention drives discovery. I think you've probably heard that in some of the talks already, but you're going to hear it more than once from us. Now, I spoke earlier about lower friction and a higher volume of organic traffic. And relative to mobile, what that means is that retention is lower. And so if you look at this graph on the right, for games that are in the same genre as Base Battles, Driving Empire, and Zo Samurai, Day one retention is about 16% for games in the 90th percentile. That means for all the players that installed yesterday, 16% are coming back today. 
And if you compare that to a number of mobile game genres where this is displaying the average, you can see that it is substantially lower. And so what we've come to learn is actually similar to mobile, telling players where to go probably isn't quite enough to drive up retention. You need to equip them with the how to play and really importantly, tell them why they want to come back and keep playing. As Andrew shared, retention drives discovery. What this really means is that improving a game's retention not only makes the existing stream of new users retain better, but it also causes the Roblox algorithm to give our game a lot more impressions and a lot more visibility and a lot more new users. We saw this on our game encounters, where initially the retention was low and so were the impressions from the platform. Then our talented encounters team, through a series of experiments, substantially increased the retention of encounters. Then the Roblox platform noticed that, wow, Encounters is a lot more retentive than it used to be, and began to send the game a lot more impressions. It's amazing that on Roblox, to grow our player base, all we need to do is make our game better. Compared to mobile, to grow the player base, we have to spend millions of dollars acquiring users through marketing. So retention drives discovery. So how do we move up retention? Well, there's a hypothesis that we've had on Roblox that telling players where to go and kind of letting them figure it out is enough. But what we've come to learn through a series of experiments is that we believe telling players where to go isn't quite enough. On base battles and on encounters, you can see that we added arrow guides. We pointed players where to go. On Zo Samurai, we took it one step further and we literally just spawned the players straight into the action. No need to figure out where to go because they were already there. And what we saw was an increase in core actions on the first day across the board, increase in battles, increase in fighting. But none of that translated to increases in day one retention. Telling players where to go wasn't giving them reasons to return. So what are those reasons? We've learned that telling our players how to play is very important to growing our retention. We need to equip our players with the skills they need to play and have fun. On Encounters, we saw exactly this, and we wanted to really improve our game's retention. So we created a new champion called Noob, directed towards all our new users, that was a lot easier to play with. So we, we wanted our new users who were using Noob to know how to play because it was so easy to use it. As usual, we A-B tested the Noob champion release. Half of our new users had the Noob champion. The other half of our new users did not have the Noob champion, and they had access to all of the other champions in the game that while they might be even more powerful, they were harder to use and more complex. When we analyzed the results of this A-B test, we saw that the players with the noob champion retained a lot better because they you know, knew how to play because the noob was so easy to play with. We took this one step further on our game Zo Samurai. And truthfully, this is an experiment that I thought would not work, but our team, many of whom have a mobile games background, really wanted to try this because it's a common practice in the mobile games world. On Zo Samurai, we created an on rails tutorial that taught players core accents, such as how to swing, how to block, and how to kick. As usual, we A-B tested this new tutorial. Half of our new users had the tutorial, half of our users did not. The new users with the tutorial learned how to play and retained and played a lot more than the new users who were just dropped into the game. So we've learned that really showing people how to play is very, very important to growing retention which grows contrary to many platform beliefs. So telling players where to go and then helping them understand how to play is really good, but ultimately you want to give them a reason why to return. You need to give them goals and feedback on those goals. And so on Zo Samurai, we added a very lightweight player level system. Kill players, earn XP, earn enough XP to level up. As you level up, you display on a leaderboard. What it does is tell players that making kills equals progress, progress equals achievement, and it gives them something to come back and attain. And in doing so, we saw a 7% lift in day three retention. Similar story played out on base battles. We released an event to everyone here. In this event, a player had to complete a set of goals in a limited time. They complete those goals, and they unlock a tank. During this event, we noticed that new player retention was higher. And so we went back and we redid this event. We set the goals and customized them for new players. We found an interesting weapon that would be special for new players and released it again as an A-B test. In doing so, what we saw was a 10% lift in day seven retention. And what this is saying to a player is, there's the goal set out for you. Here's a set of things to do, feedback on those things, and it gives clarity about why they want to come back. So equipping them with the where and then the how and ultimately the why was the recipe for the highest retention. 
So having covered retention, we'd like to turn to social. Roblox is incredibly social. You heard yesterday that there's over 17 million friendships being made every day. It's quite incredible. And even if you're playing alone, when you drop into an experience, it is vibrant and alive. There are players all around you. And that's the thing that we as creators relative to mobile really have an advantage. We get to take advantage of that because existing players provide this amazing social proof and they can sometimes help new players onboard. The piece here though, and this is the one that we think is often overlooked, is those existing players can sometimes be detrimental. That power imbalance can be too much. And so we have to be conscious of it as we think about design and strike the right balance. Now, this is the one where, look, social is tricky and every game is different. So we're not gonna provide best practices here. We are gonna call out the differences and ask all of you to think about them as you look at your own games. Let's start by talking about some of the positive impacts that we've seen existing players can have on our new players. We saw these positive impacts on our game-based battles where we created these new player servers. So we A-B tested new player servers. Half of our new users were put into these new player servers where they were totally shielded from the existing players. The other half of our new users were put into regular servers where they were facing existing players. The revenue per user of the new users who were in servers with existing players was a whole 92% higher than the new users who were put into only new player servers. This is because the existing players drove the new users to spend due to a power imbalance and from showing off all the amazing things there were to purchase for Robux. That being said, the impact of existing players is not all positive on our new users. We saw this on our game Encounters, where we wanted to increase the game's retention. So we created a bot that our new users could face as their first match so they could likely win in their first match in the game. The retention of the new users who faced an existing player instead of the bot was 5% lower because just as the new user was trying to learn how to play, the existing player would completely destroy them because they had the best champion and already knew all the best moves. On base battles, in that same experiment I shared in the previous slide about the new player servers, even though the new players who played with existing players monetized better, they retained significantly worse because same as encounters, as the new players were just trying to learn how to play, they were getting completely destroyed by the, new, by the existing players and just had less fun. So they retained 15% worse in their first day, which is massive. On Roblox, we need to be very conscious of the impacts of, you know, of, of, the, of our existing players on the new users because they can be very strong in both directions. So let's close out the last area of learning relative to mobile. There's a common misconception on mobile, and that misconception extends to Roblox as well, that players are irrational when it comes to spending. Uh, they're just spending their parents' money, or that's a flashy object, they'll, I'll convince them to buy it now. No, players are very rational. They calculate value and they plan ahead. And so gimmicks and flash are not gonna be the recipe for long-term sustainable revenue. Similar to mobile, what we've come to find is that the majority of our revenue is coming from our long-term engaged veteran players. But unlike mobile, that revenue is dispersed across a broader spender audience, and we believe that's the case because they are likely working within a budget. And so as we think about monetization design, we have to be doing so with those constraints in mind. Roblox players are typically younger than mobile game players. While they're younger, they are extremely smart spenders. We saw this on our game Driving Empire, where we created a new store for buying in-game cash. When we gave players more cash per Robux spent for buying larger cash packages at once, we saw an 8% sustained increase in the revenue per user, which is massive. This is because our player base noticed the, noticed the better value and spent more as a result. On our game Base Battles, we created a starter pack, and we experimented a lot with the pricing of the starter pack. For users that we showed a very high price for the starter pack that you know, was not, did not make sense compared to what was in the starter pack, they first did not buy the starter pack at all. And second, because they saw an offer that was poor value, they spent less on base battles as a whole. So our learning here is to only show offers and only offer dev products, game passes to our players when they're good value or we risk them not only not buying that dev product or game pass, but spending less on the whole experience. 
Another thing we learned after analyzing so many top games on Roblox is that the majority of revenue comes from veteran players, which we at Voldex define as people who started playing the game at least 90 days ago. This taught us two things. The first, to really move our revenue numbers, we need to focus on engaging and monetizing our veteran players. We need to constantly release new things for those veteran players to purchase. The second thing it taught us is that we don't need to focus so much about how much our new users are spending on our experience, because they really don't account for much of our revenue at all. For our new users at Voldex, we're really focused on their retention and engagement, so that one day we hope they could become a veteran player, at which point we can make some money from them. Lifetime value is the total amount of money a player has spent in your game from the moment they started playing to the present moment. We've created a number of lifetime value buckets, LTV buckets, and then looked at the spenders within them and the amount of revenue that sits within them. Much like mobile, you can see that the majority of spenders sit in the smaller LTV buckets. In this case, 61% are having spent somewhere between one and 800 Robux. Unlike mobile, though, you can see that the revenue continues to predominantly sit in those smaller LTV buckets. There are just not enough spenders spending seven figures to push the revenue downwards. So as we think about monetization design on Roblox versus mobile, you're designing for players that are spending tens of dollars, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we believe that's the case because we think players are more likely working within a budget. And this does connect with some of the external research that we've seen. For parents that are allowing their children to make in-app purchases, roughly 40% of them are setting a monthly budget of about $10. And we saw some data come through on pricing tests that we've run that seemed to reinforce and validate this. On Encounters, the fighting game, we released a new developer product. We released it at a price point of 650 Robux, and we ran a test that compared it to 400, 300, and 250. Unsurprisingly, as you lowered the price, conversion rate dramatically increased. Interestingly, across the board, though, you can see at 400, 300, and 250 that the overall revenue per user increased. We were just not able to generate enough conversions at that much higher price point to offset the decrease or the increase in revenue. So what this is telling us is that there's a sweet point to hit and that we need to be conscious of how much a player has to spend at that point in time and then again couple it with delivering really high value. So that really begins to wrap it up for us here. With respect to learnings about differences and similarities relative to mobile on Roblox, we've covered three large areas. We started with onboarding and we said, look, actually similar to mobile, telling players might not be enough. We really need to help them understand how to play and then most importantly, give them reasons why to return, why to keep coming back. We then went through social design where unsurprisingly, Roblox just blows mobile out of the water when it comes to social. But in this case, we actually need to be really thinking about how do we maximize that upside and make sure that we're mitigating the potential downside. And then last but not least, with monetization design. Again, much like mobile, players are rational. They calculate value. And much like mobile, your veteran audience is accounting for the majority of your revenue. But unlike mobile, it is dispersed across a greater set of spenders and that they are more likely working within a budget. So we need to be designing with those constraints in mind. Before we conclude, I want to remind everyone that we're always looking to acquire the best Roblox experiences. If this is at all interesting to you, we'd love to have a strategic conversation. You can find me at the conference or visit our website. Finally, we're always looking for great talent. Here we are at our recent team meetup in Orlando at an alligator tour. We'd love to see you at the next one. Please don't hesitate to reach out to our recruiter, Brian, who you can see in the back of the image here, or, or find a role that interests you on our website. And with that, thank you so much for the time today. We're grateful for the chance to present and to work on Roblox. Now, let's jump into some Q&A. So we do have 10 minutes together. So if anybody's interested in any questions, you can see two microphones here, very similar to yesterday. Um, if you have questions, please come forward, and we'll take them from there. I see one coming up right now. Hey, Bye. thanks, guys. Um, 
So really cool to see the A-B testing that you were doing to sort of prove out your hypotheses. I'm wondering how you think about sort of the work that goes into that um, and whether it's worth sort of the, the um, potential edge cases that arise with users coming to the game and experiencing different experiences across an individual test um, and how, how you make the decision of whether it's worth the insights versus just sort of delivering a new feature to all players. I'm happy to roll. Um, I, that's why I emphasize the word try to A-B test everything. I, wa I want to put that emphasis in there. And I will say that's maybe one of the big differences relative to mobile is particularly on the side where you're teleporting in with friends that it is a lot harder to test everything. Um, so I'll note that we always want to make sure that the experience is consistent for players, particularly if they're playing socially and we're still wrapping through some of those edge cases that you speak of. I'd say it's a balance. Um, for big changes that we believe are higher risk or have the potential to go one way or the other, those are the ones that we want to roll out. And then the other comment that Alex noted is we will often put that into players' hands through prototypes and Discord channels much earlier so that we're getting at least an early signal that this won't be massively detrimental. So how do we balance that there's no, no like one-size-fits-all solution here? It's kind of a gut check that says, is this going to be bad, if you will, because that's the really thing that we want to mitigate. Another thing is to be transparent with our players when we're testing something so they don't like, you know, freak out that they have different experience from another player. And that we're all doing it to make the game better for everyone. Happy to talk more, though, after. This is an interesting topic that I'd love to go into more detail on. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I guess um, we'll go to you in the front. Yeah. Go for it. Hi there. Can you hear it? Yeah. Um, so coming from mobile into Roblox, if you went back into mobile, I, I don't know if you guys still are focused on that, what learnings have you had from Roblox that you would take back to mobile, or is it a too difficult a business to sustain these days? That's a wild one. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to maybe, I'll cut at this one on two angles if I think about it. One is maybe on the like content creation and sort of dynamic with engaging with player bases. I think mobile still hasn't figured that out. There's a lot of just like, I'm going to buy an influencer. I'm going to send some money and throw money at the wall sort of thing. I think that one still hasn't been figured out about building relationships and realizing that it's like a coexistence. They support each other. I think traditional mobile games haven't yet cracked that code at scale or really thought through it meaningfully. I think that would be one. And the other is, frankly, just engaging the player base a lot more as well. So I think there's a lot of, we're going to build this, and then we might run some play tests, or we'll go to user insights and run some surveys, or maybe talk to a few players. But I feel like there's a lot more co-creation that happens on Roblox, and that seems like an opportunity that could exist on the mobile side. Might be what I would think about. Go for it in the back. Right. Thank you hey very guys. much. Hey, uh, guys. Sean Keith from NBC Universal. My question is, as mobile matured, you had large and well-funded companies that came to dominate the landscape, right? Their, their pocketbooks and their experience were hard to comp compete with. Do you think the same thing could happen on Roblox, especially as the platform uh, grows and becomes a, you know, a much focused on by other game companies that are being squeezed in the, in the mobile landscape? Do you want to take it or do you want me to? Yeah, I can answer this one. Um, like on, on Roblox, we see that you know, the, the top games are mostly owned by individual creators that created them. And there's a lot of you know, companies and big teams that try to compete and make new games. And that's you know, very, very difficult. Um, and we still see the top experiences are made by individual, uh, you know, native Roblox creators. And we, we don't try to make new games either. Um, right now, it's, you know, it's, it's very difficult to compete with, you know, millions of experiences being, being created as a, as a large team. I just maybe add on to that as well. Like, if you saw yesterday, I think it was, what, like 33% of the top 100 or top 200 experiences were new year over year. And so I think Roblox is clearly focusing on this community and making sure that smaller, mid-sized creators can continue to build interesting experiences. I mean, that's the innovation on this platform. That's what makes it so interesting, really. And I think if you start seeing that consolidation and maybe that ruthlessness, that you're kind of taking away the spirit of what, what is good. Um, and I, I almost feel like that would be like a death knoll. So that would be a sign of bad. Um, but that's maybe my hot take on it. Thanks. Hello. OK, so I have a question with regards to the A-B testing. So I think uh, my understanding of the analytics right now is that it's generally you know, for the whole experience, right? Um, how do you design your tools in a way that allows you to analyze um, you know, the player experiences based on the 
different A-B tests. I imagine that you have to have your own suite of tools that enable you to, to, do, to do that. So I'm quite curious like how, how you've been able to execute that. Yeah, I can start. So yeah, we have our, our we invested in building our own tools to do A B tests and you know hopefully it comes to all creators on Roblox one day. Um, but yeah, it it was a lot of work to build those. Oh okay. To build yeah, those I tools. thought there was like some open source tools that you all use. No, it's it's an in house set of tools that we use that make sure that it, one set of players will receive one experience and another set will receive a different one and then we can evaluate the metrics accordingly. Ah, okay. So all the tracking and data sits on our side. It's not being funneled through Roblox right now. Okay, cool, thank you. That was actually the exact same question I was gonna ask, but <laughs> uh, I guess another question would be, when you guys are looking at your funnels and your cohort an uh, analysis, like, I've, has there been any like really unique things to Roblox that's been, um, maybe that something that like creates churn that uh, you didn't really notice with mobile games, but uh, something maybe different? I mean, I, I can jump on with that. I, yeah. I think we keyed in on it, with particularly with that base battles new user server test. That's the one that continues to blow my mind. Because you wouldn't necessarily face that on mobile to the same degree, because you're not jumping into experiences where there's like 24 other people there with you. So the impact of the other players around you, I think, is the one that continues to be uh, an interesting dynamic. Um, so I'd say relative to mobile, that's the one that stands out, at least for me. Because it's just, frankly, a less controlled experience. You're kind of leaving it to the whims of the players uh, and hoping that they behave. Perfect, thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for an amazing presentation. The information is really important and it's, it's great that you uh, managed to capture it and also explain it very well uh, about all the analytics. Um, my question, there was a part where you were talking about how reten day seven retention is affecting discovery. Have you meant like <laughs> in that in that field of like checking retention, have you also compared this against number of sessions of users or the length of sessions of users as well? And if that affects discovery as well? Don't take it. Yeah, so discovery from our understanding is driven yep. by a few things. The first is you know day one to day seven retention. The second is how much time our players are spending on our experience. Third, like how well our experience monetizes. And fourth, how much people click on our icons relative to all the other icons on, on Roblox. And we have to optimize towards all four uh, pillars to really uh, influence the discovery. I'll say you've got the booth over there with search and discovery. I highly recommend you go, uh, go relentlessly grill them. Having done that myself, it would be part A. Part B, I think you saw in Manuel's presentation yesterday, he showed, I think, seven different buckets of inputs. So there's clearly a lot going on in the discovery algorithm. So uh, I think they're working on transparency. That was one of the big things. So as Alex noted, we believe there's like a big four. Um, but the other things you noted all play into it, and like clearly, um, mm -hmm. to what degree to be determined. Roblox will be sharing that with us in the next three to five years, I think, was the timeline given. So go, go <laughs> pester you. them relentlessly on my behalf. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, well look, we've got two minutes left. Uh, if there's no more questions, really appreciate the time. Alex and I are gonna be around. Please come find us. If you wanna come join us, hit up Brian. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for the time today. We really appreciate it and uh, enjoy the rest of RDC. Thank you. Thank you.